of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board. Uh, I'd like to start the uh, meeting by reviewing the minutes of our previous meeting, uh, in this case, uh, our July meeting uh, from two months ago, since there was no meeting in August. Uh, do any of the members of the board have any additions or clarifications to make? It was a long time ago. I have a motion. Chairman, I yes. move that the minutes be accepted as submitted. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you very much. The minutes are accepted. This month, uh, in our packages um, of information for, for this meeting, we had uh, various items of correspondence brought to our attention. Uh, we have a letter from Wolf, Clifford, and Hangen regarding the Sprague subdivision, a letter from T. Muldoon regarding notification and response, a letter from the town attorney regarding the MC Associates lawsuit, a letter from the town attorney regarding a recent law court decision, uh, a copy of the Planning Commissioner's Journal for the summer of 1998, a copy of the Zoning News for July 1998 and August 1998, uh, and a new copy of the Subdivision Ordinance, which became effective on July 8, 1998. Uh, in addition to that, on the podium this evening, awaiting us was some further correspondence, uh, a letter from David Perkins regarding Morgan Lane, a letter from Steve Harding of Oast Associates, town engineer, regarding the Sprague, Sprague family master plan, and a memo from the Conservation Commission of Cape Elizabeth regarding Morgan Lane. And and that concluding our uh, correspondence uh, brings us to new business this evening. Uh, we have one item of new business, uh, which is the Cantor Lane Morgan Lane Amendments, uh, which has developed further information for their application. Uh, this will be uh, an amendment to a previously approved resource protection permit and public access waiver to vary the road location and increase the amount of wetland alteration, uh, which will be reviewed under section 19-8-3, resource protection permit regulations, and section 19-4-2B, public access waiver uh, in the pre-June 1997 zoning ordinance, uh, since that's when the original uh, application was approved. Uh, that being said, there have been some, uh, some further developments, and I'd invite the applicant to the podium to give us an overview of them. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is John Mitchell, Mitchell and Associates, and I represent the co-applicants uh, for the Morgan Lane project. I get in, in accordance with Maureen's memo, um, I, would, I assume that the Planning Board would like to discuss the uh, completeness items first before we get into um, comments made by the town engineer. Is that correct? Yes. Um, since our last uh, submission, we have uh, provided additional information uh, with regard to the completeness. The first uh, item was we prepared a, uh, an as-built plan of Morgan Lane, which was prepared by uh, land services, registered surveyors. The second item uh, is we prepared a detailed layout, grading, and planting plan uh, for the proposed Morgan Lane uh, improvements at a 50 scale. Third item was we provided a, uh, an amended indenture which addresses uh, the maintenance responsibilities um, of the various lot owners. The fourth item was uh, we submitted a DEP permit for the additional wetland impact. 
And the final item was that we submitted a uh, wetland impact plan. And I believe those uh, were the items that the board was interested in uh, obtaining for uh, to complete the completeness list. Uh, could you uh, perhaps just as an, an overview describe the the uh, the work or the the sort of what, what the application is for at this point before sure. we just to sort of round it off as we <coughs> uh, for those who are not familiar with the property uh, the Cantor Lane is uh, let me refer to this plan Cantor Lane is an existing private way that provides access for two residences two existing residences um, Cantor Lane is uh, adjacent to just northerly of the Methodist Church off of Ocean House Road. Uh, Morgan Lane uh, intersects Cantor Lane at this point, is also a private way um, and extends approximately uh, 700 feet uh, to provide access to lot one, lot four, and lot five, three lots. This is the 50 scale plan that I referred to, uh, which shows detailed layout, grading, drainage, and planting. The uh, Morgan Lane uh, is, is constructed to approximately a 12 foot width currently. It is proposed to be widened to a 14 foot width uh, with two foot grass shoulders on either side. The turnaround at the end uh, will be constructed in accordance with the town standards for a, uh, for a hammerhead turnaround. Uh, the, this little turnaround here was constructed to provide access for emergency vehicles uh, to the existing dry hydrant. That basically is, is a summary of uh, our application at this point. Okay. We have um, the plans that you have before you have addressed all of the initial comments made, made by the town engineer. Uh, we have subsequently received uh, comments from the town engineer uh, based on our submission, and we've attempted to um, address those comments also, which, which I'll review uh, tonight. Very good. Uh, at, at this point, the, the board will uh, begin a review of the completeness of the application. And then after we do that, uh, we may have some more questions. OK. Thank you. Uh, the best thing, I think, for us as a board at this point in time is to go down the uh, list from the zoning ordinance that we have uh, of the application requirements uh, for the resource protection permit and uh, take a look at how uh, the current submission uh, relates to them. Uh, uh, first of all, we have a, uh, uh, a requirement for a detailed site plan, which we have. And I guess uh, perhaps what we might want to do is go down through this list and talk about the uh, the items which are which are not just a straight yes at this point. Uh, and if anybody has any uh, feelings about ones that have been indicated yes, uh, please speak up. Uh, first of all, one of the uh, one of the requirements is a uh, written description and a high intensity soils map of the site's underlying soils, location of hydric soils, and the wetland upland edge prepared by a certified soil scientist. And this is something uh, which the applicant has re requested a waiver uh, for this information. Uh, we do on the plans uh, have the, the uh, wetland upland edge indicated. Uh, and the, uh, so we have part of that apparently. 
we also had uh, in the original application uh, information which was sort of a uh, description about the, uh, the wetland area when the original application went through. Uh, so I believe that this is a, uh, uh, this pertains more to the actual performance at this point in time of a uh, high, in high intensity soil survey. Anybody have a, a? Well, it was way before originally, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was. Yeah. So and it I don't see any need to change that. This seems to be consistent. Um, another item for which a waiver has been requested is a stormwater runoff plan prepared by a professional engineer. Uh, in this case, uh, the entire, uh, the entire work is within one catchment area for rainwater. It's all on one side of one slope and does not involve uh, differing watersheds and calculations of, of runoffs from into differing watersheds. So the applicant has asked for a waiver on that. And again, this is something that was uh, waived at the last, at the original application also. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. You skipped over number three, which is a written description of the entire parcel and the location of the wetland. And um, in the communication, of, I have a genuine question of April 24th, 1998, from Mitchell and Associates. Uh, there was a description of the lots, the individual lots. And with regard to lot number four, uh, it's an undeveloped parcel consisting of approximately 11.01 .01 acres. Uh, it has 230 plus feet of frontage along Ocean House Road. Yes. Is that really? Yes. It's, true? it's configured, uh, this is lot four, it's configured such that the frontage is is along Ocean House Road. That's, that's all part of Lot 4. Oh, I see. OK. Now. Now, the, the history of this goes back to, I believe, the mid-'70s when it was subdivided by the previous owner, not this applicant, but by the previous owner. And this is how the lots were configured. OK. All right, my question is answered. That's a poor-looking lot. <laughs> Uh, we have uh, all of our other uh, requirements have uh, we have had a submittal on them uh, I guess it's up for us to determine whether or not it is an adequate submittal these are the ones that Maureen has checked with the Y uh, we have three which have been indicated to be not applicable to this application. Uh, one, number seven, being the map indicating the wetland upland edge based on hydrology. And I believe what we have is an uh, indication of the wetland upland edge uh, based on uh, plant materials and, and plant types. At this, at this point, we do have the wetland. I know we have the wetland edge. We have the up, uh, wetland upland edge. I, I'm not sure why that's not applicable. Uh, the wetland delineation was based on the state definition of, of wetland right. using hydric soils, vegetative, okay. and hydrology. Okay. Uh, then another item that we have indicated that is not applicable is uh, mitigation measures, if any. Uh, we had some mitigation area measures in another part of the same project before, but uh, uh, not at, at this point on this plan uh, for the, for the uh, widening of the road itself. Uh, I guess it's, it's, it's uh, of value at this point to point out that the original application was approved for a 14-foot wide road. Uh, but 
it just wasn't built to 14 feet wide in the first pass. Um, and our final uh, item would be other additional information required by the town planner. And that would be through this board's directive, and we haven't directed any. Yes. With regard to number 11, information on the exact sites and specifications for off pose draining, filling, grading, dredging, and vegetation removal. I take it that is the on, the, on one of the maps that was attached to um, the information, this one. Yes. The crosshatch, not the crosshatch, but the striped, um, this is a map of the wetland impact. Correct. That is the description of the exact site that is going to have all this proposed draining, filling, grading, dredging, yeah, the and reason vegetation we, The reason we prepared this map was um, one of the engineer's comments was he was coming out with a different uh, calculation than we were for our total amount of wetland impact. Mm -hmm. So we prepared this to make it, to clarify um, that item. And I think it has done that. It, it's, it's clarified it for the town engineer. But that is the exact site. Correct. Yes. Okay. And then also on the notes on one of the maps, you have the, the amount of cubic yards of fill, yes. et cetera, that, that is a description of. Yes, that's correct. That's that, happening. And that's been placed on, um, on sheet two. Note eight. Right. And then uh, with regard to uh, filling and grading and vegetation removal, I think that this 50 scale plan uh, illustrates mm -hmm. those items also. The preliminary application of this uh, uh, amended application showed the wider road but didn't show the grading and the filling ban bankings to the side of the road associated with it, which this plan now does. Uh, it's not required for uh, our application, and, but it usually is required for construction, but there are other permits which are in progress or have been secured yes. for this project. Uh, we've mm -hmm. received our DEP wetland permit for the additional fill that was included in your packet, I believe. And what about the Corps of Engineers? Corps of Engineers is still pending. Okay. I do have a question. Why were these? It appears to me that some of these lots were drawn up without any frontage. Is that correct? Originally, um, they all had frontage. It but was, now, it, it as was, I look, it was very strange the that the you know the way that they were configured. Um, but originally, they all had frontage. Uh, the plans that you have, I believe, in your submission packet, um, lot, lot four. In lot five, the frontage, well, lot four, in particular, the frontage of lot five um, was along Morgan Lane. Lot four was uh, eliminated. The frontage on that was eliminated, but that was a comment that was, um, was mentioned by Maureen, and we have since changed the plan uh, to, so that the frontage for lot four is here and the frontage for lot five has been increased along Morgan Lane. Is that map the same map that we have? With the exception of those two items that I just mentioned, yes it is. I know that we're not talking about boundaries and, 
and that kind of thing tonight. But um, I just wondered if some of these lots would be buildable without frontage on the road. That's why we changed the plan back. See, from the time that we became re-involved with this project, the lot lines had, had changed. And then through this planning process, we've changed the lot lines back so that they're all conforming. They're all legal lots. They all have frontage. Um, so that the, the plan here is current. The plan that you have Unfortunately, is the older plan. All right. Okay. <laughs> it's confusing. Oh, well. Okay. Uh, one final item that perhaps relates marginally to completeness is uh, one of the items which was originally marked not applicable mitigation measures. I notice on the uh, 11 by 17 on the podium this evening there is a small area where it says the area to be mitigated with wetland soils and plants. So right. that's a slight change in the And that was a result of um, changing, revising the turnaround so that it conforms to the town standards. Uh, we, uh, there was an opportunity to eliminate some of the, uh, the width of the northerly leg of the turnaround, uh, which was placed in wetland, and we're proposing to mitigate that, that small area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Thank you. There was also some criticism. Of, uh, criticism. I forget from whom uh, about putting uh, the driveway, the option, optional driveway for lot number four, off the turnaround. And I see you've changed the position of how that um, goes off that 14 inch. 14 foot, yes. 14 foot. Right. Um, I see what you've done. You've added that, cr that uh, striped area, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. on this map here. And that, in, in, uh, in doing so, we've, we've, uh, we're proposing that that driveway be placed in that fashion, uh, which is all in Upland. Um, okay, I'm not quite clear on what that looks like, and that was a bone of contention. I'm not really sure what that looks like, that, that uh, left-hand uh, part of the uh, turnaround, where the, where the driveway goes off of it. Mm -hmm. what is, how many feet wide is it, 24? The turnaround, that no northerly lake of the turnaround is 14 feet wide. Well, what is the, the striped area? the little pie wedge the, that the you've added. The striped area is the area. Oh, that's to I, be mitigated yes. with wetland soils and plants. See, what we've done, you're, you're looking on the 11 by 17 right now. I'm looking okay. on this that you gave tonight. Right, and that's why I passed it out so you could review this change. Um, what we have done is, is we've widened the easterly leg of the turnaround to 24 feet wide in accordance with the town standards. And we have shortened the northerly leg of the turnaround from 24 down to 14. So the area where it was 24 and now it's down to 14, um, which was in wetland, we are going to restore back to its wetland condition. Well, what I'm getting at, is this going to, ha has this been run by the fire chief? And whether this is going to be adequate for? Uh, I believe the fire chief is out of town, so he wasn't, he hasn't seen this, I don't believe. <clears throat> um, it was submitted to the town engineer for his review, 
and I don't know if he has commented on that or not. I think that he didn't like it. He reviewed the old. John, do you mind if I speak for a moment? No, please do. Uh, the large plans that you all received in your package, yeah. those are the only plans that have been thoroughly reviewed and commented on by town staff. So the letter in your package from the town engineer reflects comments from the information that was in your package. The, the, the plans that John is, is showing you tonight is an effort to respond to those comments that you have received. But there has been no official response from the town engineer or any other staff person of the new plans that are being shown this evening. And that's just been, some, I think there's some confusion with that. I just wanted to clarify it. Uh, that, that being said, I think at this point uh, the board can uh, begin a discussion of completion, the relative uh, completion of the application at this point uh, before we go further with discussing the, the merits of the application. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't like holding anyone up, but yeah. uh, I would like some input uh, from uh, the town planning as well as from the fire chief. Uh, we will be certain to ask for it. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Oh, we'll, we'll be certain to get it. Uh, but before we begin substantive discussion of the application, we need to determine whether or not it's complete or not, and then embark upon verifying how it works. Uh, you know, has the material required to be submitted been submitted? And then do we begin uh, deliberating on the, on the, uh, on the, it's how it works with respect to the zoning ordinance. Uh, so going back to our, our checklist, and I think this is something that is uh, really just a matter of some housekeeping, and then we can go back to the, uh, to the actual details of the application. Um, well, does anybody see anything at this point, in, just in terms of what materials would be needed to be submitted in order to decide on this that, that might be? Well, I mean, he, here's the question for you, Mark. Can we deem this application complete without any firm information on that turnaround? Uh, if the requirements for what is supposed to be submitted for a turnaround, you know, in terms of describing the work has been submitted, uh, and the various uh, types of information that are required under the ordinance have been submitted, we can deem it complete. It does not mean we have to accept it in our deliberations on it. Uh, but we have to decide first if, if in fact, we have, uh, have a description of the proposed work which meets the requirements of what's supposed to be submitted. Uh, there are two sec there, there's another section, of course, always in, in these in terms of performance requirements. And we're not, we don't need to get into that just yet. That will be our next step. Well, I'm prepared to make a motion then. Oh. Be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Shore Roads Incorporated, Sangamon Associates Incorporated, and Canta Corp for amendments to a resource protection permit and public access waiver, approvals to allow additional wetland alterations and changes that relocate Morgan Lane be deemed complete. Um, be it further ordered. That the application be tabled to the regular October 20th, 1998 meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing shall be held. Uh, should we table at this time uh, if we may have more questions of the applicant with regards to such things as the turnaround or, or the layout? I don't think you can debate a tabling motion. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. I will uh, second. Uh, second. Hmm. Any discussion? Can I can I say something? Yes, surely, Mr. Mitchell. We have worked very, very hard. We've put in a lot of hours to try to address all of the concerns, not only to make this application complete, but to address all of the questions, concerns, and issues raised by the town planner and the town engineer. And we would really appreciate the opportunity to at least discuss those issues tonight. I'm not asking for the board to vote on this uh, application tonight, but I am <clears throat> requesting that we at least discuss these items so that we can go back. So you give us some sort of direction, um, and, and we can go back and address the board's concerns for the next month's meeting. This has been a very, very difficult project. Mm -hmm. And we, we are really trying to make this right. But we need direction from the board. And I think to wait another month before we get that direction is, is very unreasonable. Well, as I understand the uh, motions which I seconded, first the motion for completeness would start the clock running. It would then limit the time that this board has to uh, act uh, on the uh, on the measure, and second, uh, that it's clear that uh, from what's transpired so far, that we do need some uh, input, uh, and it seems to me that a public hearing would be uh, would be helpful in that regard. I'm not sure that uh, that anything that's come up so far that we can give that I can indicate to, to the applicant any direction. I don't know what's going to uh, um, be brought out at the public hearing, but I think there should be one. I find a little difficult to follow that there are two different maps, and, and I point that out. I think it would be helpful if there was just the one map that we were all working from, but that's only one minor point I have. Mm -hmm. So I believe there's been a motion made and it uh, has been seconded. And a second. Any discussion? Uh, I, for one, would be interested in hearing the applicant's response to some of the uh, items raised by Maureen in the memo and, and responses to the questions of the, the town engineer, which the applicant, uh, I think, is, is prepared to do, or at least attempt to do. Uh, so I, for one, would be interested in, uh, in the application being deemed complete, but uh, giving the applicant more opportunity to present more information at this point. So. Well, those of you who want to vote against the motion may. Okay. But we shouldn't be debating a table in motion. No. Okay. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. All those not in favor? So it fails. So we have a failed motion. Uh, Further discussion? Uh, or a new motion? Mr. Chairman, I have a motion. <clears throat> yes, Mr. On completeness only. Be it audited the basin and plans and materials submitted and the facts presented in the application of Shorewoods Incorporated. incorporated. Sagamon Associates Incorporated and Cantor Corporation for amendments to a resource protection permit and public access waiver approvals to allow for additional wetland alterations and changes that relocate Morgan Lane be deemed complete. Uh, is there a second? I'll second the motion. I haven't done this this chair before. What the heck? <laughs> Any discussion on this motion? I think uh, at, at this point in time, it does not mean that we're going to uh, 
do anything other than uh, move on to the next item on the on the agenda. Uh, but give the but it probably is uh, there are questions that might be able to be uh, discussed. Uh, well, having no further discussion, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion indicate by raising your right hand. All those opposed, none. Motion carries. Uh, the motion, the uh, motion passes and the application is currently uh, deemed complete. Uh, at this point in time, I think uh, uh, what we might do is I think that uh, we've had a little bit of discussion so far amongst ourselves about uh, having a public hearing. Uh, members of the board could we could discuss this a little bit and decide whether this uh, or and or uh, and site walk perhaps are needed by uh, by this application or or not it does seem to be something that uh, I think it definitely that needs, needs to be approached a fresh uh, as it would be I know I realize this is this is one that uh, is kind of different because it's an amendment to an an approved uh, application from the past, uh, but there are different features to it, so having a, uh, uh, a public hearing and a site walk might not be a bad idea. Uh, we have several members absent uh, this evening, uh, which means that uh, we could probably schedule a site walk uh, and may or may not coordinate with their schedules, uh, but it's probably not a bad idea to, uh, to get a chance to, to do it if board members feel it's necessary, uh, and uh, if they can make it, fine, and if they can't, fine. I have a question concerning the sidewalks. Will the sidewalks connect to the pedestrian easement at the back of this development? The sidewalk? Yes. There, there are no sidewalks proposed for this project. There is a pedestrian easement uh, which will link the Robinson land trail system up with Ocean House Road. Mr. Mitchell, would it, would it be possible for us to uh, do a site walk on, on site and have sure. the sort of areas of work be sort of shown sure. at yep. that point in time? Yep. Uh, during the course of the, of the fall, something that has usually worked for us uh, now that it's getting darker earlier is to do a very early Saturday morning uh, walk, and this one would be... Now that there is a road there, this would be a lot easier than it was when it was just woods. Uh, does that sound good to people? I couldn't hear you. Would, would, early, would early Saturday morning be a good time to go take a walk? This Saturday morning would be well, This Saturday morning, would right be off of that? So I'll be away for the next couple of weeks. Okay, well that would probably be a good, good time to do it then. How early do folks like to get out? <laughs> Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. That sound good? We'll have a site walk at eight o'clock Saturday morning. Could I um, ask a question about this, the, this letter from, no, it's not from you. It's from, oh, okay. it's a Dear John letter. <laughs> and, uh, David Perkins. It's about the, the pedestrian. Easement. Yes. Would you, could you elaborate a little more about that? The applicant is proposing to grant a uh, pedestrian easement uh, which would 
lie along uh, between lots four and five, a 20-foot wide pedestrian easement, um, which would link up to the existing trail system of the Robinson land and allow pedestrians to <coughs> circulate down uh, onto the private access way and out to Ocean House Road. Where does that uh, right-of-way start, that easement? Right there. Begins right there at the rear property line. <coughs> and uh, as indicated in this letter by David Perkins, uh, that signed executed easement uh, will be delivered to the town attorney upon approval. Is, is that something, though, that, that uh, we want to? to consider uh, for vehicles. I, I think you've got uh, some sort of uh, uh, trail bikes on that thing, haven't you? Uh, are they using it now on the, on the land? Uh, there are. I, I've, I've seen evidence of, of motorized vehicles on that trail. However, this applicant has tried to discourage that by placing um, you know, logs and boulders across easement to discourage that and I think that it would be wise to do the same thing on the proposed one. I, mean, I, I just wonder how the language came about, uh, the, the drafting language that allowed motorized vehicles on that right way. To allow? Yes. I mean, how did that get into the... I'm not aware of that. <coughs> I think it's in there. Snowmobiling. Yes. Yes. It says snowmobiling, all terrain vehicle, and motorcycle. All terrain. Access. And, and, you know, I, I just wonder. But, uh, I <laughs> I'm not sure that that is a snowmobile trail. Well, that's what I'm saying. I don't there, know why we should. No. Uh, there, is a, um, there is a trail that, uh, that proceeds, I think, from the buyer estate land through the Robinson land, and I've never done that. I've walked part of it, but supposedly it comes out behind the church, the Methodist church. Mm -hmm. Is that right? And it's not yeah. part of the snowmobile. No. No. In fact, there are signs out there on the Robinson land that... Right. No snowmobile. No ATV uh, vehicles. The only thing I can think of is that this came off the word processor. Exactly. I think it should go back on the word processor yeah. and have that. Uh, I mean, who's going to want to buy a 10-acre lot with a bunch of yahoos going by on the snowmobiles all day? Uh, I, I know that this applicant uh, <laughs> doesn't want that, so that, that will well, be uh, eliminated. Yeah. Mr. Mitchell, I have a question about the turnaround. Could you explain to us the, the development and the design of the turnaround and what's intended okay. for its final? Would you like me to go to down the list uh, point I, by point? Well, we have the, well, the turnaround and the hydrant are left, so I'd be interested in just sort of having you tell us yeah. about, about where uh, Okay. Um, I'm, re I'm looking on page two of Maureen's memo. Mm -hmm. um, of whose memo? Maureen. Page two. Item one uh, refers to the public access way of the pedestrian easement. And as, as I mentioned, um, a signed easement will be uh, submitted to the town attorney uh, upon approval. Item two, the turnaround. Um, we have revised the plans, and that's this, the reason why I passed out the 11 by 17 to you this evening. Um, revise the turnaround so that it's in conformance with the town standard for a turnaround. Um, I had discussions with the town, uh, town uh, engineer this morning, and he was um, going to review it today. I'm not sure if he ever got back to Marine or not with his comments, but uh, 
it, it has been revised to meet the town standards. Number three uh, has to do with the maintenance of the existing hydrant. And as I mentioned, we included an indenture uh, which addresses, uh, which basically grants the right of the various lot owners to uh, access and maintain the existing fire hydrant. And I, I realize that you probably would want this uh, reviewed by your town attorney, but uh, that indenture that amended indenture does address those concerns. And the subdivision lot lines, uh, paragraph four, uh, as I mentioned, we have revised the plan so that all lots now have legal frontage um, either on Ocean House Road or uh, Morgan Lane. Uh, are, are there any questions before I go to uh, the town engineer's comments on those four items? Uh, I'd like to just run down um, Stephen Harding's comments. Um, item one, there, I, I believe that's just a statement and uh, there's no response necessary for that. Item two has to do with uh, the detail. He wanted some additional information, some additional notes placed on the cross section of Morgan Lane, and we have done that. There are three items that he wanted. Uh, a note to the contractor, which is stated here. A note regarding the aggregate size of the uh, base gravel. And a note concerning the geotextile fabric. Uh, we've made those changes on the plan. Item three uh, has to do with, uh, that's again, that's just a statement. Uh, that was the plan that we had prepared for his clarification on total amount of wetland impact and uh, he is satisfied with that. So there's no response necessary for item three. Item four has to do with the turnaround and the additional wetland impact. Uh, in bringing the turnaround into town standards, it required um, a small amount of additional wetland impact, a total of 180 square feet, or, I'm sorry, 190 square feet of additional wetland impact. And w since we already have received approval from DEP for the additional wetland, uh, we are going to submit a letter to DEP uh, outlining uh, the reason why we uh, would need 190 additional wetland uh, impact and we'll have that, we'll have a response from them uh, at your next meeting. Also included in uh, paragraph four uh, is a no parking sign and that's on your 11 by 17 a no parking sign has been placed at the end of the easterly leg of the uh, turnaround. Item five is, uh, has to do with the uh, maintenance of the dry hydrant. And as I mentioned, the indenture addresses, addresses that. Item six, uh, he wanted two notes on the plan combined, which we have done. Uh, regarding the responsibility of maintaining proper site distance from the intersection of Morgan Lane and Cantor Lane. And lastly, the, uh, the phone number for DigSafe uh, has been corrected on our, on our plan. So I believe that we have addressed uh, both Maureen and, uh, and Steve's comments. Um, Is it appropriate that we receive the new uh, maps with these corrections? Yes, yes, we'll, we'll do that. And then we can throw away all the rest Excuse of me? Well, no. I threw away two 
other maps this afternoon when I was going through the former information that we had in May. Mm -hmm. So then we can dispose of these that came with this package, right? right. Could I ask the planner a question? Yes. Maureen, uh, did Steve Harding get back to you this afternoon um, with his comments? Yes, he did. Uh, he's still reviewing the turnaround. He was checking it with two different templates, and neither one of them worked so far, but he's going to look at it again for you. Um, he checked some of the other notes that you had made. Um, The typical roadway section that was on your September 11th letter on page two, number two, he was satisfied with that. Um, there's still some issues with the turnaround. Uh, the no parking sign, you knew that you had to move that. And he was satisfied with the change you'd made to note, four, note 14, which is item five on the letter, and also to item six in the letter, which is uh, the plan notes 12 and 18. And he said that the dig safe, dig safe phone number still needs to be corrected. Which it has been. On the turnaround, we still have the other issue of the, I'm not sure the planning board is aware that um, under the subdivision road standards, that uh, driveways are not supposed to be coming off of turnaround areas. Um, all T-shapes, and this is uh, on page 29 of the subdivision ordinance, it states that all T-shaped turnarounds shall be paved and at no time shall any portion of the turnaround be incorporated into a private driveway, a private road, or any access road. In the original application, would that driveway have been sort of aligned with the turnaround, but beyond the dimensional requirements of the turnaround itself? How did it work? I'm before? trying to remember. Uh, I'm trying to remember how that driveway. Yeah, I mean, it was at the. It was in the turnaround. It just it, came off the end. What did? Yep. Yeah. It just. It. I believe it came, it came off, off the end of it, not the side of it. It came off the end, and I think. What we've done here is to create a better situation where it comes off to the side of, of the, uh, the lake. Previously, the driveway came came off this lake as opposed to this lake. It came off the end of this lake. If, if that's not permitted, what other option do you have? Going to have to redesign lot four? The, the, Out to Shore Road? The, yeah, that's the only other option is to come across. <laughs> that would be a pretty long driveway. 
don't know. This um, is a family subdivision. Would that standard apply, Maureen? Which, still which standard are we? Yes. The, the reason it may apply is because under the public access waiver standards, which is the standards the board is using to review, you have the opportunity to reach into the subdivision ordinance and use the road standards in the subdivision ordinance. So, yes, you can choose to use that standard and apply it, or you can choose not to. Uh -huh. But in either case, we need to make sure it works for a fire truck and not be blocked by snow bankings or some condition of driveway use also. I think that's uh, just as a matter of discussion amongst the board. I think, you know, we would definitely, you know, need to sort of know how it would work in terms of the radiuses and the turnarounds involved of the right. actual equipment. Yeah. I think that's probably more the, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, is the reason that one side of the T is 24 feet and the other side is 14 feet, is, be, is it because of the wetland, the little 190 square feet of wetland there? Partly, yes. The, the 24 feet is following the town standards. The 14 feet with... Is not well, following the standards, correct? Right? The town standards does not give a dimension on that second lake. It gives a dimension for the turnaround for the fire vehicle, but it, but it does not give a dimension for this. And um, we applied 14 feet so that it would be consistent with the rest of Morgan Lane. And what we did was we widened the, we increased the radii from 20 feet to 30 feet. But if that wetland wasn't there, you probably would. If the wetland was 24. That's correct. We we would. If the wetland wasn't there, I mean, we're trying to minimize the wetland impact. Well, you're so, mitigating that. What about filling it? We're going to restore it back to its original state. Its wetland. Correct. State. I mean, if. I think we have to hear what the fire chief, chief mm -hmm. has to say about the 14 yeah. feet. And um, what are we going to do about that driveway to lot four? That's up to you. What are the options? Though? Um, well, the options are uh, First of all, that the um, one of the things that we've uh, heard and had demonstrated by the fire chief before is that um, the by the book T that we have here is not the only arrangement that he would accept. He wants to turn the ladder truck around, and if it's a Y instead of a T, or an X instead of a T, or a P instead of a T, or something like that, he will he will be happy with that. Uh, and I would I would myself really just urge the applicant to review those turning radiuses and position a driveway appropriately so that it does not interfere with any of those turning radiuses. Uh, you know, I mean, there's probably many options for how to arrange the, uh, you know, the head in and the back out and the turnaround of the fire engine along with positioning a driveway in that location, and I think it's up to the applicant to, to sort of show us the arrangement that would work. Maureen, you, you read, um, you read uh, a prohibition against um, putting a driveway off the tee. And where was that, that I can look it up? That's on page 29 of the subdivision ordinance, top of the page.
no time shall any portion of the turnaround be incorporated into a private driveway, a private road, or any access road. Can that be waived? It can be waived. It appears to me that the entire thing is in a private access way, in this case, already. The entire turnaround here is already incorporated into a private road by, by, defi by de facto because That's it's at true. the end of a private it road. Uh, the original uh, public access waiver had language in it, uh, especially for the planning board to use if more than one lot or more than two lots or, or a certain number of lots was being created, which made the planning board feel that more than uh, the sort of, you know, a, a, a higher level of standards needed to be conformed to for the public safety. And a, and gives the planning board the right to require subdivision road standards, even though this is not a subdivision. Uh, it does not mandate, however, that we do. Uh, but the standards that we have uh, for the private, even for the private access, you know, for the, pub would the public access waiver, excuse me, you know, do require that the, uh, that the turnaround works to the town's satisfaction. So what you're saying is, with the approval of the fire chief, we could waive this prohibition, right? Uh, is that correct? That's a, that's a, I believe that's a decision we could make. What? That is a decision we could make. Yeah, okay. We could. We could, we could find that the application meets the intent right. of the ordinance in a case like this. Mr. Chairman, I can only say from a practical standpoint, a waiver is an audit here because the alternative is a 1,600-foot driveway. <laughs> well, there are different ways of doing it, obviously. And, uh, and a very unusual configured 1,600-foot driveway because of the way these yeah. lots are laid. <laughs> it's absurd. And yeah. With the fire chief's approval, which I'm sure it will be granted, one of the things I just wanted to mention to the board that the fire chief will not be at the sidewalk. Uh, there's a firefighters convention in Waterville this weekend. And that's where he will be Friday and Saturday. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Just uh, one of the other fire protection issues, uh, which may, uh, which is also uh, part of the sort of overall design of the subdivision, was the installation of the dry hydrant. Has that been satisfactory to the, to the fire chief in terms of its installation? I have not spoken with the fire chief uh, directly since uh, the applicant, uh, after hearing that the dry hydrant didn't meet the flow standards oh. by the fire chief, the applicant went down and cleaned out the end of the pipe and, um, and requested that the fire chief retest the hydrant. And I have not had the opportunity to talk to the fire chief um, to hear about those results. Mm. Um, I understand in talking with Marine that it doesn't meet uh, his standards. So uh, I, I don't know what the problem is. The hydrant was built according to the approved plans that the town and the fire chief approved. Um, we've, we've tried to remedy the problem, and uh, uh, it still doesn't work, apparently, or it still doesn't meet his standards. Well, I'd be interested in finding out how that goes. Right, yeah. That information is available. Yes, Nancy. And speaking of the fire hydrant, do you have any idea what direction you're going to move in with regard to the maintenance of it? Um, 
create a homeowners association or there were some other um, options also like giving easements to the other lot owners okay. other than I'm number gonna two. I'm going to defer to Helen Muther who is uh, who actually prepared the indenture um, and who is interested in purchasing lot four. I'm actually uh, an attorney also. I'm Helen Muther. I live over on Shore Road and my husband Paul Woods and I are we actually have been under contract for I can't tell you how many months on lot four so we've taken a lot of interest in um, having this happen and back when before anybody realized that there was going to be an amendment to the permit we were going to close in February and I drafted the indenture because I saw um, that was a requirement and so in your packet at this point I believe it was just submitted um, today to Maureen so it'll go out in your final packet before public hearing is it a, what's called an amended and restated indenture back when this was a family subdivision there was an indenture um, dealing with a hypothetical road that was never built so this has been drafted as an amended indenture which deals with all of the typical homeowner association issues such as maintaining the road who's going to pay for it and then in addition to that um, it grants an easement to the three lot owners to go over to the hydrant for um, access and maintenance and meets um, all the requirements that were in that initial permit was granted. Does that answer your question? Yes, so okay. that will that will be stipulated though in your it will be recorded yeah. in the registry, yes. Any other questions of the applicant? I think everything I've wanted to hear has been presented. Mr. Chairman, I have a motion for the board to consider. Yes. Be it further ordered that the application be tabled to the regular October 20th, 1998 meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. We have a motion. Is second. there a second? Second. second. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by raising your right hand. All those opposed? None. Thank you very much. Thank you very we much. Look forward to seeing you next month. Um, the site walk, would it be a problem if everybody parked on Cantor Lane and met at the intersection of Cantor and Morgan Lane? I'm sorry, Maureen. Park where? On Morgan Lane? No, I'm suggesting everyone park along the side of Cantor Lane for the site walk and that we meet at the intersection. I'd like to pick a location where we're all going to meet. Yeah, um, it may be more convenient. It's whatever you want. If you want to park along Cantor Lane, it's very narrow. That's the only thing. It may. Okay. Or you could park at the turnaround here on Morgan Lane. Okay. Sure. So everyone knows where we're going to meet? Yes. We're going to meet it right at the intersection of Morgan Lane and Cantor Lane. That concludes our agenda for this evening. Uh, do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. A second. All those in favor? Thank you very much.